This is a game design talk. I'm going to talk to you about this thing that we do, what we've discovered at Inkle. Um, so I don't know how many of you are familiar with the age-old horrible discussion of games. What are games? If you've ever written a university essay on this, you will know that it's not worth even going there. And players have opinions on this too. But this is the... This is one of the many definitions of what games are. This is Crawford's definition. And it breaks things down into toys, puzzles, contests, and games. A toy is something you play with, it doesn't have a goal, you just have fun with it. A doll is an example where you can imagine, or just something that just feels nice to interact with. Like there's this classic anecdote of like how they build Mario is they build the toy first. They make Mario really, really, really fun to control, and then they build the game after that's done. Next bit, puzzle. So a puzzle is basically a toy that has a goal. Um, your classic examples of puzzle is uh, Portal or something. Um, Portal is an okay toy, like making portals and walking between them, that's quite fun for a while, but actually the, the real meat of it is the puzzle. It's trying to work out how am I going to overcome this challenge? How am I going to fulfill the goal? The next one is a contest. So now you've got conflict as well. So this normally means a human opponent, uh, but you don't play against them so much, they're just there and you're trying to compete with them. So you can actually do this against yourself if you play a racing game where you have your ghost, where you last played, and you're just trying to beat your high score. So Space Invaders is this, um, ah, like a lot of games are this, and then the last one is when you add a competitor, and this is uh, your classic game where you're playing against somebody who's actively trying to stop you completing that goal because they want to complete their goal and you're trying to stop them. This is the most complicated form of game that we know of. So this is probably a good time to mention <laughs> the distinction between a game, which is this thing, and the other game, which is the, the packaged thing that you go and buy on a shelf. And I'm just going to have to reiterate that every time because they're the same word. Um, so definitions are not prescriptive. I'm introducing a new taxonomy onto this thingy, but oh my god, do not get too hung up on this. It's meant to be useful, not definitive. So, a good example of this is the Olympics is typically a set of contests. You just kind of compete for the best score. How fast can you run this thing? How far can you throw this thing? But now we have football on it. Football is sort of wrong with the Olympics, and it feels like that because it's a different thing, but, but anyway. Um, also, most games in the packaged sense, when you buy Fallout, Fallout is not a game or a toy or a puzzle, it's like 20 of those different things all together. I'll go into that again. So, right, this is the new one. This is the thing that I'm going to talk to you about. This is an activity. An activity is more than a toy, because an activity is something you do, but it has a goal. You're moving towards something, or a toy to play with it. But it's less than a puzzle, because there's not really a... Uh, you're not trying... Like, it's, it's not hard. You don't need to think about it. You don't really need to strain against it, and you can't really be wrong. An activity is just something you do. You just move towards it. So an activity has these things. I think this is what defines it. They have a clear sense of progression. They actively guide you towards completing the damn thing. And there's basically no pressure. They're not hard. There's no challenge. You can't really fail an activity. You just do it. Um, so this probably sounds really boring. Um, and yeah, arguably it is. So what I'm basically going to try to persuade you of here is that activities are actually the mainstay of games. Most of the time when you buy any sort of commercial game, you're doing an activity. You're not playing a game game. You're doing the activity. You're just moving your way through it. That's mostly what you're doing. So Solitaire is a pretty good example of a packaged home that is an activity. In Solitaire, you're just making moves towards the goal. You're putting the 8 on the 7, and you're just moving forward. You can't really be wrong, actually, in Solitaire. Solitaire, like, like you, yeah, you can lose Solitaire, and you can win Solitaire, but actually that's random. That's just based on how the deck shapes up. So it's not a great example, actually. But you, you are always just moving towards completion when you play Solitaire. Um, ooh, fade. Right, so here are some examples of activities in games. I have this list on the notes, but I can't read them. So... Right, here are some things that you do that I would consider to be activities. Uh, exploring a world, traveling across a world with no obstacles, crafting, uh, mining, uh, searching for a thing, sorting your inventory, decorating a room, creating a character, searching for the next platform to jump on, um, combining objects, um, fitting together pieces. These probably sound quite generic and abstract, but this is because it's a design talk. 
so they are. But these are actually the things you're mostly doing in games. So, uh, have some examples here. Oh yeah, these do not need to be boring. These are the things you're doing most of the time. So we're gonna play a game. The game is shout out what you think this thing is. Is it a toy, an activity, a puzzle, or a game? Has anybody played Dysphoria? <laughs> You guys suck, it's free! <laughs> Alright, go play this for it. So, right, this is a terrible one, let's get to it. Okay, bomb map. What is it? Toy, activity, puzzle, or game? This bit's quite long, it's gonna be very boring if nobody shouts. <laughs> puzzle. Game. Game. Really? Game. Yeah, Who's a game? Yeah, game. You're all yeah, trying yeah. to stop each other from winning by trying to blow each other up, and you're there trying to do the same thing. It's a game. Toy, activity, puzzle, game. Activity. Animal crossing. Activity. 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 Yeah, right, oh, this is a hard one, because actually now I'm crossing, you're doing like 20 different things, you're shaking trees, you're hunting for treasure, you're chatting to the characters, you're trying to make money, you're doing lots of things, but in general, yeah, activity, I think. Um, portal. Puzzle. Yeah, why is it a puzzle? Because you said it was. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't use that as an example. But anyway, it's a puzzle, because there is one solution, well, typically one solution to each, each thing. There's nothing to compete against, you're just trying to solve it. But there is actually a thing to solve. It's harder than an activity where you're just kind of progressing. Uh, Sims. I don't know. I should probably mention I don't know for all of these because taxonomy is not prescriptive. But yeah, it's probably more of a toy. You're kind of just moving around and it's fun. But at the same time, you sort of have some goals. I don't know. Ah, it does. And it also depends what you're doing in it. There's different parts of The Sims. There's the bit where you're, I don't know, just trying to make them sleep with each other, which is quite <laughs> fun. That's quite an activity, oh. I suppose. It's quite easy. <laughs> <laughs> or you're trying to do something hard, like make them rich. Like you've kind of got to work out how the system works. Well, without that. cheating. Without cheating, yeah. Mother load. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, PUBG. Toy activity puzzle game? Yeah, yeah. yeah right, because you're all trying to stop each other. Uh, I did this one. Uh, hidden object game. Game? And activity. So, I think this is an activity, but I don't know. Um, it, it might be a puzzle. I think it's an activity because you're kind of just moving towards it. They're not actually hard. You just look for it. But maybe somewhere between. I don't know. Either way, not prescriptive. So, yeah, make up your own mind. Uh, solitaire. Activity. No, hang on. This is not solitaire. This is definitely more. Oh, this is hearts. Hearts. Game. Yes, I think so. Uh, frisbee, from description. Game. Yeah, it probably depends how you're playing it. Is it, it. You're it playing ultimate frisbee? Yeah. Is it ultimate frisbee? I don't know. If but it's ultimate frisbee in this game, if it's just frisbee, that's just an activity. I don't know. I don't know. Toy, mate. It depends how you're doing it. But yes. Frisbee, frisbee is just playing. Yeah, yeah. Ultimate it's frisbee sort of is just playing. Frisbee. Yeah. Is this ultimate frisbee? Yeah, well, that's what I keep saying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Battery's really low, so. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I said this before, I lied. Uh, Uncharted. Game. Puzzle. Activity. Activity. All of the above! Actually, no, anecdote. Uncharted is like four things. Uncharted is shooting, exploring, climbing, and puzzles. Puzzles, clearly puzzles. Uh, exploring, I think, an activity, you just kind of do it. Uh, shooting, I think, again, they're trying to stop you doing it, you're trying to kill them. And the other one, I can't remember. Uh, Proteus. Who's played Proteus? Proteus is cool. Um, yeah, I think it's an activity, it's not hard, you just kind of move through it, and then eventually it ends. And that's satisfying in itself. Uh, Candy Crush. Puzzle. Barely a puzzle. So, <laughs> I wasn't sure about this, because like, it's just a puzzle, but at the same time, people don't strategize over it even a little bit. They just do it. They just do it. I think so. You, you can be good at it, but most people don't even try to be. They just make the thing. And that's enough to keep you going through the whole game. So I think so. But, yeah. Uh, Rain. Oh, that's a hard one. Yeah, it is. I don't know. That's, this is fine. There's an answer. But either way, it's just because you're thinking in terms of these different forms. Skyrim, a whole bunch. Uh, Advance Wars, the game. <laughs> ah, this is the good one, though. Jigsaw activity. Right. Yeah. Jigsaw puzzles, not puzzles. Because puzzles are hard. You have to search for the solution. A puzzle, you can't really be wrong, actually, a jigsaw. Like, you've just put the things in the thing, and then you've progressed. You can't really go wrong. So it's actually an activity. Wow, mind blown. Um, right, so things you might have noticed. Activities are never the whole thing, except for jigsaw puzzles. <laughs> uh, 
they are a part of something else. Also, the more mainstream the game is, the more like things that tend to be in it, and the more those things tend to be not games, actually. The more they tend to be just something that you can just sit down and progress through, because that's actually what players like. Which is what I'm going to go into next. So why would you use an activity? Uh, so this is LeBlanc's uh, theory of fun. Who knows the MDA framework? Mechanics, dynamics, aesthetics. Oh, no that over in the corner. So um, this is a paper, it's worth reading, but in general, one of the things it does is it maps out eight different things that players enjoy about games in quite a wide abstract sense. But sensation, games that feel nice, fancy games, a world that's enjoyable to engage with, a narrative, a story, challenge, you know what that is, fellowship, uh, making friends with people, chatting with friends, uh, discovery, exploring something new, uh, expression, uh, a way to express yourself, submission, a way to kill time. So the thing you'll notice is that challenge, which is the thing we normally think that defines a game, is just kind of one of eight of these. And it's kind of because games as this sort of challenge People don't like that, actually. If you have a game that's all challenge, it tends to be really hard, and you lose a lot, and you get really frustrated, and people are dicks to you. And this is actually a common factor of basically all games that are challenge-based, except for chess, because people are nice, but they're also still mean, because chess is mean. Um, so when people play this kind of game, like an e-sporty kind of game, they tend actually to only engage in challenge a little bit. Most of the time, like, you know, there's like statistics about how most people who engage in esports don't even play the game. They just like watching it. They like engaging with it socially. They like, like most esports are team sports, actually, because people just like to play with their friends. That's more important than just the challenge of, I'm better than you as a game. Um, and this is the reason that the, the witness is, has lots of like roaming around the island, which is an activity, you're just kind of exploring it and that's nice and you're progressing through the world because puzzles are really hard. Nobody likes that for too long. You get really annoyed and you quit. So John Blow puts lots of drifting around the world to make it not annoying. Um, and the reason for this is basically that making games, proper games, is really hard. There's like 10 games actually in the whole of the world. Um, this is one of them, this one's really good, but even this one that took five years to build is sort of basically chess, when you boil it down, basically all strategy games are sort of chess. You have some pieces, you move them around and you make them attack each other. And even chess took thousands of years to build, so actually making new games is really hard, and games are really limited in what they can do. Like, this is all shoot em ups ever. We started here, we got to here, this took like ten years, and now we just make this. And it's not even a criticism, that's just actually what games seem to be. We seem to have settled on not many forms. So this is from Rap Costa. Rap Costa is a game designer who has mentioned how well, actually fighting games is like four different kinds of fighting games. And otherwise all fighting games are the same. And actually the fourth one, which is the, the latest iteration, is most fighting games actually. We really haven't, the most fighting games are exactly the same thing, just with different moves, different characters and aesthetics and whatnot. Um, backwards. Right, I can't remember what this slide was meant to do. Um, oh, yes! Okay, so one nice way to identify an activity over a puzzle is that activities are easier to build, actually, than games or puzzles. Puzzles are really hard. If you need to build a new level in Portal, you need somebody to sit down and work out what's the player trying to overcome, how are they going to learn it, how are they going to hint towards it. Whereas actually, if you want to build a new activity, you just scramble the damn thing. Well, you add one. It's really easy. Like to, to make a new puzzle, you just get a different picture and you cut it up in a different way. We'll take the same picture and you cut it another way. And that's sort of the reason that well, one of the reasons that activities are so common. Partly because players don't like hard things, but also because they're really easy to build. And games want to be big so that they can be worth your time. That was mine. So the third reason that you should use activities is because actually competition is really limited. It's really fun, and I like League of Legends, but you can't do that many things with it. And this is sort of the reason that all um, like groundbreaking narratives in games are the same narrative. They're the story of you being told to do a thing and then the game saying, oh, no, no, hang on, you should feel bad about that. You should feel really bad. You killed all the classes, but they were nice, actually. And you killed that guy because he told you to or something, but you weren't meant to. And that's what all game narratives tend to boil down to is like this reversal of the assumption that games are about you following orders. Um, and actually, games can do more than that, but games can't. Uh, 
Um, so, here are three things that activities do that games can't do. So people that are hard games, there aren't many games, and games can only tell a limited number of stories. So this is the last bit, I promise, I know you So uses for activities. Uh, activities are really good for resource sinks. So basically the reason that most AAA games are open worlds with stuff to collect with then things you spend the resources on is because people like big open worlds that they can explore because it's a fun activity, incidentally. And then you collect some stuff, and then actually, wait, no, hang on, what do you do with the stuff? Because otherwise, why am I collecting this stuff? So why do I care about this game? Well, we don't have an answer for that, unless it's ammo, which you can shoot it at people. So we tend to put sinks in games. So like the reason you explore worlds is to collect lockpicks so that you can use the lockpicks to open doors so that you can collect more stuff. This is not an especially exciting game. In fact, this is a terrible game. It just goes on forever. But it's quite engaging, actually. Like, you can do 50 hours of this, which is pretty good. And, yeah, there's a lot of this, actually, in games. If you look out for most open world games, just sort of pay attention to what you're doing most of the time. It's not gameplay. It's collecting stuff and then spending it on various abstract activities. You can't really fail the lock picking thing. You kind of just move towards the solution. You can fail if you keep doing the wrong thing, but if you pay attention to what the game's telling you at all, you'll eventually win. Uh, the other thing activities do really well is they tell... Oh, do you have a thing to say? Oh, no. I have to say this is a really good game. Ah, oh, it is. Yeah, I love... It. Yeah, uh, Florent, great. Has anybody played this, by the way? That's brilliant. You should all play it. Um, so Dysphoria is sort of like Florent. Play Dysphoria. So the way this game works is... It's a linear story, there's only one way to progress through it, but it's interactive, and through its interactivity you connect with the characters, you connect with the story. And this is something that games typically, game games, typically do really badly, because games are all about giving you the choice to do different things within the story, which means the story branches, which means the story is really hard to write, which means you get lots of shitty endings, and people don't really feel satisfied. So, actually, if you want to build a linear story, what you want to do is you want to put the player in a position where they're making lots of fun activities, they're doing things interactively, and they're connecting with the characters, and they're connecting with the world, but it guides them through the story. So this is actually the most effective way I've ever seen at telling a linear story. If you want to tell a love story where the player could, I don't know, tell their potential partner to fuck off, which is what you do in a game, where you give them the choice, yeah, you don't do that at all. You just make sure that it always progresses in the way that you think it should. You make it linear. And you give them activities that just kind of take you forward. Uh, alternate verbs, the other thing... I wish I had my notes. Oh, yes. So, this is the other thing activities do really well, is games only allow you to do a few things. They're normally very conflict-determined, very uh, dominating. They're all about how I kill this dude who's over there. But let's say I want to represent hacking in my game. Yeesh, that sounds hard. How do you build a game about hacking? I don't know. But what you can do is you can build activity about hacking or lockpicking. You don't even think about too much about it. You kind of just you come up with something fairly simple that uses up a resource and like it's it's a bit hard to do, but you don't need to worry too much about it. So this is the translation game in Out There. I say game. These random alien words, as you collect stuff, those alien words turn into non-alien words. So you have a really, really good reason to collect stuff in your world. But all of a sudden, you can say. Your game is about translating stuff. You travel throughout the universe, you upgrade your ship, and you translate an alien language, which is really <laughs> cool, because a lot of people really want to do that. And you could say the same thing in Fallout. In Fallout, you explore a world, you hack into computers, you open locked doors, you kill people, you chat to people, you can fall in love. You can't fall in love, you can chat to somebody, and you can press a thing that says, I'm in love with you now, which is not a game, but it's an activity that you can then tell players, you've just done this really cool thing. And players latch on to that. It's fantastic for marketing. And it's fantastic for making your game feel big and open and real. So you can pack hundreds of activities in without taking away too much from your core system. And that's actually it. Sorry, I rambled. <laughs> um, basically, activities are really cool. And now you know how to identify them. You will start seeing them everywhere. 90% of all games are activities. They're not game games, they're not hard, they're not even trying to be hard, they're just trying to push you through them, they're trying to take up your time in a nice way, they're just trying to keep you occupied, they're trying to make you do all of the things that are on the blank thing in the jiggle that you don't typically think about, but are absolutely doing all the time. 
And that's it. I'm done. Thank you. I would say that most like big AAA single player games are usually activities pretending to be games. Yes. Because they want you to think that you made the decision to blow up the helicopter. Is very really true. that was the only option you had and that was the thing the designer wanted you to do. Yeah, right. I mean there's the anecdote about how uh, when you play Uncharted they make the enemy when they start shooting at you, they always make them miss. So it's not hard to kill a few enemies. It's only when you start yeah like abusing the system that they even make it hard at all. And this is just just how games work constantly, because challenge is not it's not like, fun. Most people don't like it. Yeah, like in games like that, when you do like very occasionally die, it feels like a bug. It's yeah, like, oh it that does. wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah. It's like the game crashed or something. Yeah, it you know, is. Like when the game goes flat, flat and you go back to the start and yeah. like, that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. It's definitely true. <laughs> yeah, that, that's good. Do I need to stop? Yeah, that, that's, that's, we can discuss it afterwards. But we'll <laughs> so yeah, really appreciate you talking. It's been really, really good talk. Thanks so much. Thanks again. Awesome.